I hope you can hear how fantastic that sounds. Hi everyone, welcome to this wood-fired workshop at Manor from Devon Cooking School. In this workshop we're going to be talking about pork crackling. That's all we're going to be talking about, no recipe, no nothing like that. We're just going to be talking about pork crackling and why your wood-fired oven is the best place to get pork crackling. So I've got a piece of belly pork here and we're going to be cooking that but first of all I want to look at the oven and talk about the oven. So we're going to be using the Bushman, the refractory oven for this today but I'm also going to talk a little bit about how you might be doing this if you did have a steel oven but I think really the refractory is the perfect environment for this because it is such a lovely dry environment and because we've got radiant heat cooking our meat. So I've preheated the oven. It's got a lot of heat in its mass. It's sitting at a little bit over 200 here to start with. Uh, so that's a perfect temperature to start it off and get that crackling to rise. And we've got this radiant heat coming from every direction at once. And this is completely different to what you get if you're cooking in a conventional oven. If you're cooking in a gas oven or an electric oven, the heat works completely differently. So uh, radiant heat hitting the meat from every angle at once and a very dry environment because we're not burning any wood. The wood's burnt down. We've either got a bed of, de a bed of dead embers, which is what I've got here pretty much, or a cleared out oven. So the environment is very dry and I'm going to keep the door open a tiny bit throughout the cook so that any moisture that does come out can disappear. And then we've got the best environment possible for crisping up the skin on the pork. If you're doing this in a steel oven, you're probably going to need to maintain a bed of embers throughout in order to keep the temperature elevated to a little bit above 200 degrees to start with and then 200 degrees and falling thereafter. Uh, so you might need to keep your embers in the oven. Apart from that, you've got heat bouncing off the steel so you've still got radiant heat from your embers but it's bouncing off the steel still giving you that nice surrounding heat so now let's look at the meat so there are of course lots of theories about how best to get crackling to rise everybody's got their favorite so people are pouring boiling water over the meat people are salting it and leaving it for a long period people are uh, using hair dryers to dry out the surface, uh, rubbing it with oil and salt, you name it, the list, the list goes on. We're going to keep it very simple. I have dried it, so I've blotted it with this to make sure there's no excess moisture. But as I said, we're going to be cooking it in a very dry environment. So even if there was some moisture there, it's going to disappear almost instantly. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of salt on this, and that's mostly for flavour. I have to say and what we're not going to do is put any kind of marinade on the on the um, skin at all so if you are using a marinade sit the meat in the marinade don't let it touch the the skin because it will only interrupt the crackling process what we are going to want to do is score the skin so if we cut through the skin we get down into the fat a little bit that means that as we cook heat can get into the skin from pretty much all sides, so top and, and sides, which then drives out water and will allow the, uh, the skin to blister. And then if we cut into the fat, it just allows some of that fat to render out, but not too much because we want that lovely, sweet, soft, juicy fat next to the crispy skin to make really good crackling. So what we're gonna do is use a Stanley knife and I've just opened it up a tiny bit. Obviously, this is not the one that I use for decorating. This is the other one. Um, I've opened it up just a little bit, which means that even if I'm a bit heavy handed, I can't go too far in. And if I slip, I'm not likely to do myself too much damage with this tiny bit of the Stanley knife. So we can see that the butcher's already scored this quite wide scoring. So uh, we're going to kind of work with this and put some more scores halfway through because these are really too wide. They're too far apart to let out the moisture that we want to let out. So I'm carefully gonna put that through and then 
trying to keep a nice straight line and make sure I come out at the end and then turn it round and I'm cutting across my body here so there shouldn't be any risk of me even if I did slip of me doing myself a mischief so I like to see these about half an inch or a finger width apart so that's good so I'm just going to carry on doing that and you can see there where I've gone through the skin into the fat but not all the way through to the meat just what we want so I'm now going to season the meat with salt and pepper now of course there's a million recipes out there for different flavorings you can put with your meat but we're keeping it extremely simple and on top of the meat just salt nothing else now the meat is ready to go in my oven is sitting nicely exactly where I want it just a little bit above 200 degrees in we go and I'm leaving the door ever so slightly open there so that any humidity can escape from the oven then with the oven now at 220 degrees or thereabouts that should be enough to get that crackling starting to raise if I was doing this in a conventional oven it would be either 225 to start then drop the temperature or cook at a low temperature and then finish on on high with the wood-fired oven I mean we could do that because we could have a low temperature and then add some fire but we're doing it like this in it in the driest possible environment so we're going to start at 200 and then just let the oven fall and do its own thing so uh, I would expect this joint to take an hour hour and 15 minutes perhaps we will see but we'll be looking at it every 15 minutes or so uh, certainly to start with giving it a little spin round for very even cooking uh, so let's check back in 15 minutes so listen closely to that we can hear a fantastic sizzling going on in there we know things are roasting happily 15 minutes into our roast the oven is still sitting ju just above 200 degrees so it's fallen a tiny bit which is ideal we can hear that lovely sizzling and we can see things starting to happen with the crackling it's all going well so far I'm going to spin that around pop it back in exactly as we had it before and leave it for another 15 minutes we're another 15 minutes into our roast you can see that this crackling is really getting going now and it's already nice and crisp so now what I want to do is reduce the heat of this roast a little bit so the meat cooks nice and slowly so we're going for a sort of slow roast a little bit so this is effectively I'm doing my first 30 minutes at a high temperature and then lowering the heat a little bit so I'm going to reduce the direct heat going to the pan going to the bottom of the meat by sitting it on a Tuscan grill and putting it in the oven like that and I'm going to leave a big gap at the door so that the temperature falls below 200 down to about 180 is what I would like to see on my thermometer there so I'm going to leave a nice big gap and just sort of play around with that so I get it exactly where I want and this is about micromanaging the heat now which we can do it's no there's no guesswork here we're we're managing the oven we're managing the heat to get it exactly where we want it so we'll leave that for 30 minutes and then have another look the oven is falling in temperature now so I've pushed the door a little bit closer just so I can hold this it's sort of 175 something around that mark we're 
a total of one hour into our roast. And that's looking pretty fabulous. So we're at 77 degrees there. Got a really lovely tap test going on. Plenty of fat has rendered out of the meat. I'm going to put that back in, close the door, just see if we can get a little more heat and see if we can't get a tiny bit more blistering on the meat, on the crust itself. Before we bring the meat out for a final time, an opportunity to say thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you've got any questions at all, please put them below and we will respond to you. We'll provide notes on our website, as usual, on the blog, and put a link to that below this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. We now had a total cooking time of one hour and 15 minutes. We've got absolutely perfect crackling. Just slightly bubbly all over, wonderfully crisp. I'm just going to slip my little sharp knife underneath there. Take that whole piece of crackling off along with some of the fat and listen to that so there we are folks amazing crackling cooked in the wood-fired oven the best place you could possibly hope for cooking your crackling and getting it perfect every time